All right. What's happening, everybody? Christina, Terry, Doug. It's been a while. You know what's funny is I would say every other night, I'm like, man, I'm gonna do a Facebook Live tonight. And it gets late, we put the kids to bed. Next thing I know, me and Shannon go to bed. I'm like, ah, I'm too tired to do a Facebook Live. So tonight I just committed. Um, was supposed to do um, Blake's Takes Xfinity segment on Race Up tonight, but the, the news that Furniture Row, uh, Martin Truex Jr., that whole team shutting down, that was kind of a big deal. So uh, unable to do Blake's Takes tonight on Race Up on Fox, so we'll do it here in, in my office. So. Um, I'm gonna keep it short though. I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it like 10 minutes. So I normally get like I was gonna have seven tonight on uh, on race up. So we'll keep it short. I'll try to answer a few questions as I see it, but I really just want to talk about the race because it was it was awesome. Um, here, let me. I have such a hard time not answering the questions and saying hi to you guys. But what's up, everybody? All right. So first off. Um, Ross Chastain making his debut in the 42 uh, was extremely impressive. You know, I had him on the show last week because I knew that he was going to surprise a lot of people. He didn't surprise me because I've always known how good of a driver he is. Even though he's probably was one of the guys that I didn't like racing with the most and probably had the most heated moments and most confrontations after the races and almost like a friendly rivalry really was probably Ross Chastain. We we come from the same uh, short track over in Punta Gorda and we raced each other in those in the pro trucks and the late models and um and then we both started racing each other in NASCAR and got into it with each other a few times. And um as much as I didn't like racing with him, you know, I always respected how much talent he had. And I'm extremely happy for him because he does deserve an opportunity like that to get in the 42 car. He didn't bring family money. He had a sponsor recognize his ability, recognize his talent, and put him in a great race car. And guess what? He went out there and, uh, and showed the world what he could do. And that was uh, P1 in first practice, qualifying the pole, won stage one. Um, I, don't, I don't think he won stage two. I'm getting confused. Um, but anyways, it had to race the best of the best. Um, on one of the restarts, uh, Ross, you know, the initial, initial start of the race, Ross chose the outside over Christopher Bell, took the lead, the outside worked, but end of stage uh, one, when everybody pitted and they had new tires, started at stage two, man, I, you know, he chose the outside. I was sitting there watching the race with Josh Wise, and Josh was like, oh man, I would have taken the inside. New tires, you can get a good, a good launch through the gears. And unfortunately, that's what happened to Ross is, I think it was um, Harvick on the inside, uh, Ross on the outside, Harvick used all the apron, cleared him, and took the lead away from him. But then Ross learned from that. He uh, went out there on that next restart and actually had a great push from Allgaier and cleared uh, the cup guys and, and just raced out there like a veteran. Man, I don't think I've seen, I know I'm going on and on about Ross, um, I don't get anything out of this. I just I like to give credit where credit's due, and, and that and that guy did an incredible job. So um, leading the races, battling, he had pressure the whole time, and then um, you know Harvick was, I mean basically it was after a restart and they were battling really hard, and Harvick was there, Kozlowski was there. He had constant pressure, wasn't making a mistake, and then they went into turn one. And here's where the here's where the the debate starts. So there's a lap car on the outside. Ross is inside of the lap car. Harvick's inside of him. Ross is three wide in the middle. Harvick's three wide on the bottom. Well, Ross has to go a lane down. Harvick needs to go two lanes down. Bottom of three. When they get around the lap car, Ross was still one lane down, which is. At Darlington, it's narrow, it's on the line, it's on the bottom, it's in the preferred line. Harvick was underneath him, needed to stay on the apron, but they're racing for the lead. So there's nobody's fault in that incident because they're supposed to race each other, they're supposed to take their lines away and battle, but but it didn't work out, they wrecked. Um, but that's what happens, and I feel like 
if that didn't happen and it wasn't a great battle, like we would have been upset like Harvick didn't try to pass. Like I love hard racing like that. Yeah, it stinks that it wound up that way. But I just like how aggressive those guys are and I like how aggressive that all the drivers have been these last handful of races. You see guys using it, each other up a lot more than you did in years past and I think that's awesome. I love it. Um, but anyways, Ross, you know, got Harvick loose. They both went in the wall. Ross did a little retaliation, which I bet he probably regrets a little bit. Uh, I bet you if I asked Ross if he regrets spinning Harvick after the wreck, he'd probably say, yeah, if I could do that over again, I probably wouldn't do that and go and talk to him after the race because Harvick had some bad things to say about him after the race and those always hurt no matter, no matter how much you say you can look past them, those always hurt. So he probably, that'd probably be the only thing that Ross would do different that an entire weekend is not retaliate on the racetrack at Harvick. So there's my take on how Ross did. One thing I can promise you is that that opened up a lot of doors for Ross Chastain. That's not going to be the last time. Well, he already has two more planned races, Vegas and Richmond in the 42 car, but that won't be the last of it. You don't just get an opportunity, race like he did, and then never get a shot again. That's just not the way it works. DC Solar loved him. The owner, Jeff... Um, Karpov, I think Ross keeps saying, the owner of DC Solar loves Ross, and that's really what you need, and he proved his ability. He's gonna get some great opportunities, and I know there's a lot of people on here from Florida that are watching, and you might know Ross from back in the day, but you guys should be happy, because you're about to see a, a Florida guy have a career switch and start battling and winning some races, and, and I think he's gonna win one of the next uh, two that he's in. But as you guys know, he's gonna have to beat Allgaier. That guy, I mean, Allgaier had a pit road penalty, or that, or that might even happen. I mean, Justin was so fast, he drove up through the field and finished top 10. Finished 7th, I believe. So, I mean, Allgaier's been on fire this year. We've seen the races he's won. Road courses, oval, short track, it doesn't matter. Um, I feel like if they wouldn't have had a pit road penalty at Darlington, he would have been right up there battling for the lead. So, can't count him out. He's my pick for the championship, not just because he's one of my best friends, but like he is legitimately having a career year, um, really, really meshing with his team, with his crew chief really well. Uh, proud of Matt Tift. Uh, you guys know that I work with Matt Tift and help him prepare for the for the races and, and get in physical condition and, and just keep him accountable and work with him and try to make him better. You know, I, I just try to to be the person I always wish I had, somebody just watching everything I did in the racetrack and critiquing me and pointing things out to make me better. And that's uh, what I do with Matt. And he works really, really hard. And um, in Darlington was a struggle at first. Practices were a struggle, qualifying was a struggle, but we watched a lot of footage uh, before the race, went over different situations, and the guy just got better and better all race long and finished eighth, I believe, out of it. And then moved up a, a position in the point standings. I think he passed uh, uh, passed the 11 car and moved up to eighth in points. So that's pretty cool. Every, every little battle matters. So a little a little upgrade in the points position helps and locked himself in the playoffs too. Um, man, I have a little bit. Of, I have a I have some notes that I wrote down. So making sure I want to talk about it. It's a lot easier when I talk with Adam Alexander and race up because he keep. He asked me the questions, he keeps me rolling. I gotta remember what I'm saying on here. But take a few minutes and just answer uh, some questions you guys have. Um, first off, Chase Janes, what's up buddy? How are ya? Um, good luck in your late model. Everybody, Chase Janes, Chase Janes Racing. Uh, he has filter time on his late model, also ASAP Apparel. Uh, we're rooting for him, been helping him out for for a couple of years now too, so make sure you guys follow him on Facebook and stuff. Um, okay, here we go. Hearing Truex going to Gibbs, that's Martin Truex, by the way. Martin Truex going to Gibbs, Spores may be out. That's the same thing I've heard, Chris. That is, I mean, we've been hearing those rumors for a while now, but to, but it's, it's pretty real now, so it's pretty crazy, the fact that that team shut down. And we'll just hit on that a little bit. Hold on a second. Gotta get, gotta get a sip of my LaCroix. I'm not sponsored by them either. I, I think I drink at least 15 of those a day. But, um, 
Seven eight team shut down. That's crazy. Won the championship last year. Can't get a sponsor this year. Shuts down. But it happens, man. It's expensive. You know, if you look at it from that team owner, probably set a goal a long time ago that he wanted to win a championship, and then he worked. They all worked their butts off. They won a championship, and then ha what's better from there? You know, is he going to keep spending money to just win another championship? Maybe he's felt like he achieved all his goals, and and he's calling it quits. So that may be what happened. And you know, that guy spent a lot of his own money. You can only do that so long before it starts to not become fun anymore. So they're shut down, but somebody else will come along, take their place, and um, and it just keeps rolling. It just it just happens. It's part of life. Things change, but it all it all just goes in the right direction. Todd, thanks, man. Nice hat. Appreciate it. I know a lot of you guys ask for this hat, especially all you Filter Time customers that are watching. If you're not a Filter Time customer, you should be a Filter Time customer. But a lot of people message me that they want a hat, and if I could put it in with the filters, it's just not that easy to <laughs> stick a hat in boxes. So I'm trying to make it to where we sell the hats online and sell a Filter Time shirt online. Um, so you guys can buy them and support them. Ashley Potts, thank you. I appreciate you saying that I'm a good person. Making final plans for Phoenix. You will be there, right? Uh, Scott, I will be there only on the truck day of me in Phoenix. So for the truck race. And Xfinity practice day. Yep, up eighth for tipped. Yeah, also, uh, I also have the pleasure of, of working with Myatt Snyder in trucks and, uh, and Harrison Burton in trucks too. And Harrison's got a, uh, a ARCA race, a late model race this weekend up in Indy. So it's really, really fun working with some talented young racers. It, it, it gets me really, really excited. It's the next best thing to me driving is being able to be a part of somebody else driving and succeed. So right now you guys know I don't have the opportunity to drive. So I'm definitely doing something very close and, and I'm passionate about it. Do you think, Blake, do you think sponsorship is becoming too much of a role in racing? I get the need for, well, it's always been any, I don't, I don't know any different, Jeff. Um, ever since I got into NASCAR, it's been the most important thing. Um, it's, it's good and it's bad, right? If you, I never won a bunch of races, a bunch of championships and trucks and late models and go-karts to be able to get noticed and get a ride. So I never did that. And if you're my fan, you're a fan of, of mine because you saw me in NASCAR and saw me climb the ranks, but that was all because I found sponsors. It's not because I won races and won championships. So I was able to make it to NASCAR because I found um, sponsors and I had money to bring to a team and, and I got into it that way so I'm not against that because that was an opportunity for me to get in it I didn't start racing until I was 20 so um, that model worked for me to get a shot in, in NASCAR and then I was able to stay in it for nine years so um, yeah that's it kind of stinks that it it is that way but you know opportunities come from a lot of different um, a lot of different ways you can get opportunities by having a relationship with people that want to spend money and help you race or you can get an opportunity to race because you've won other races but you know you, you still ultimately uh, want to get there. there's hundreds of thousands of really great race car drivers that are gonna make it in NASCAR by being in front of the right people that's what it's all about whether you're in front of the right people from like in front of the right sponsors or if you're in front of the right team owners but even if you're in front of the right team owners, they might be able to find you a sponsor and place it like like we talked about Ross Chastain. He was in front of the right people, um, didn't have any money. They're, that sponsor already sponsored somebody in, in NASCAR, but they, they wanted to see him succeed. But then you see guys um, that are bringing money, like Ryan Priest brought money to Joe Gibbs Racing, his own money. Like he got a loan and spent money to get in the 18 car and it paid off. Um, he won won a couple of races and now and now he's uh, made a name for himself. So, I mean, no matter what, I mean, just take it takes money, Jeff. So to answer your question, do I think it's becoming too big a role in racing? Not really. Speaking of change, change your filters. That's right, Jeffrey. I have plenty of filters over here. See, I got plenty. Those are all just samples, though. 
I have this little stand. I even have a light. Shannon made fun of me because I wanted the videos to look good. So I have a light. Watch, look. See? I got a light shining at me. So like, you guys don't see shadows covering my face. So like, it looks good. I want my videos to look good. Nothing wrong with that. All right, we'll be in Phoenix all three days. Well, I will see you guys in Phoenix, that's for sure. Oh, you wanna know my thoughts about, okay, this is the last question I'm getting off. Um, sorry guys, but but I wanna do more of these and, um, and I don't wanna do them for 30 minutes or an hour. So, last question. We talked about Darlington, my thoughts, Ross Chastain made a great name for himself, Matt Tift, top 10, he's had a Killer couple of races, top fives, top tens, got a pull. I moved up to eighth in points, so moved up his position in points. And now I want to talk about the one car, Elliot Sadler retiring from full-time Xfinity racing. That leaves open the one car at Junior Motorsports. And a lot of you guys have said, you're like, Blake, go drive the one car, bring Filter Time as a sponsor. First of all, I need a lot more of you to sign up for Filter Time before I can sponsor myself. So sign up for FilterTime.com. And then maybe in the future we can make that happen. But who do I think is going to fill the one car? Uh, for one, they need a driver with a sponsor that's funded. So I think it could be a cup guy that retires from full-time cup. You see a lot of guys, a lot of changes being made in the, in the, in the cup series. We're not too sure what the, who's in the one car, the 41. I mean, we just had all that shakeup today with Truex. So we don't really know. But someone like Trevor Bain... Um, I don't know anything, by the way. Like, I don't know anything. But what if Trevor Bain came down and found some sponsorship and ran, ran the one car? I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, what about Daniel Hemrick? As far as, I'm, as far as I know, he's not signed for next year. He has some funding. He's at RCR right now. But who says that he uh, doesn't get picked up by Junior Motorsports and goes and runs that one car? You know, an Xfinity regular might, might make the switch over there. Or... Um, we talked about this on Race Hub, um, Noah Gragson. So someone like that, a young guy in trucks with some funding, with some money coming up, winning races, he could get in that one car too. So I think it's either going to be a cup guy coming down, a current Xfinity guy, or a truck guy coming up. So I don't really have any insight on that for you, but those would be probably the three choices that would come off my mind that we may see in that car. So that's it. Uh, I see Chris Cunahan's watching. Thank you, Coon. Uh, you're a rock star, so I appreciate you guys watching. And, um, and all you guys on here, too, that have been watching these for so long. All the Leaf Filter employees still love you guys, even though I don't drive your race car. Um, made a lot of great relationships over the years with all of you. So I appreciate uh, everybody that's been following me all along. And even now that they just follow me because I'm on Race Hub and selling air filters. So... Um, Really just really appreciate you guys and I'll try to do one of these a little more often. So have a great night everybody.